friends, welcome to Fiddle Yoga. Welcome to Mountain Pose. Feet are hip width apart, knees slightly bent, palms facing forward. This is my seventh daily lockdown music education video. The last two days I zoomed in on my left hand and uh, up close there was a lot of tension in there. Uh, thinking about doing the same thing today made me feel even more tense. So I'm making the choice to get less tense during this lockdown. If you want to make that choice with me, that's great. Uh, there are going to be some days when we're going to go backwards on that, but that's okay. It's all about having that intention. So we're going to start this with a little move that my online yoga teacher calls knocking at heaven's door. Release your hands by your sides and then softly twisting from one side to the other. And as we pick up a little bit of speed, our arms are going to start swinging along with that as well. And with a little more speed, they're going to start slapping somewhere, wherever they might like to lie. So I'm not a real yoga teacher, just in case anyone was wondering. But I think I know just enough about the practice to understand that there's a lot more to it than stretchy routines and some breathing. So if I'm going to use the word yoga, um, then out of respect to that tradition, I'm going to try and bring in some of the core principles of this practice. Picking up a little bit more speed, letting those arms swing up. And gradually slowing down, coming back to center letting your arms hang by our sides. Check in with your feet. Your feet are your foundation. Your foundation is that which is touching the floor and it must always come first. I imagine that each of your feet has four corners. Now, if you lift up your toes, you can feel them quite easily. If your feet are too close together, lifting up your toes is going to make you wobble. Find those points right underneath your hips. So with your toes lifted, you can feel the ball joint of your big toe, ball joint of your pinky toe, your outer heel and your inner heel all touching the ground. Go ahead and lower those toes down. Alright, fingertips go down to come up. Holding a big imaginary beach ball overhead. Shoulders low, far away from your ears. And we're going to breathe out and forward fold. You're allowed to bend your knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Straight line, horizontal, from crown to tail. Exhale, forward fold, back to the ground. Bend your knees generously. And we're going to roll up slowly, stacking the spine, one vertebra at a time. Head comes up last. Let's do that one more time. Bend your knees, fingertips go down in order to come up. Big beach ball overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway, making your spine horizontal. And exhale, forward fold. Let something go. We're going to stay here just for one breath. And then when you're ready, fingertips go out this time, out and behind. And meet together up overhead. Mine always tend to miss by a little bit. Find them together and then bring your palms down, hands to heart. So if you're an adult, there's probably some discomfort somewhere along that line from crown to tail, somewhere along that core line. Um, for a moment, let's try to forget about correcting what's wrong with it or fixing things. Um, instead, uh, we have an ideal and we want to align our spine and our body to that ideal. So the ideal is a beautiful straight line from tailbone right up to the top of our head. Um, you can imagine a beam of light going up there or water. I always tell the kids to root your feet into the ground. Imagine that water coming up your legs, up your spine. Or one that's really useful is a piece of string attached to the top of your head. And make it the back of the top of your head. If it's too far forward, the back of your neck will crunch. So further back here, and then imagine that string is pulling you up. 
And if you did that gesture with me with your hand, let's just do it with the other hand as well to even things up. So hopefully that pulls the back of your neck into a nice straight line. Um, if, the, if your lower back is arching like this, you can tuck your tailbone under. Imagine you're a dog with its tail between its legs. And that will suck in your belly as well. And it tends to loosen up your knees there. Unlock those. Your upper back is very much connected to your arms. So to straighten that out, we're going to put an imaginary pencil in between our shoulder blades and then squeeze that pencil. And you might like doing this with cactus arms. Squeeze that pencil. And release. Now cross one arm over the other. Fingertips come to your palm if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Uh, inhale to raise those hands up. And exhale to release them back down. Swap over, crossing the other way. Fingertips to palm if you can. If you can't, that's just fine. Inhale to raise them up. And exhale to release back down. Release your hands back to your sides, back to mountain pose. Notice if it feels any different from the first one that we did. Uh, and I think finally we're ready for some fiddle fingers. So release your hands. And now imagine there's a puppet string tied to the back of one of your hands. And it's pulling that hand up and forward. And the other one. And if you feel your shoulder try to engage as you do this, just drop that hand and have another go. Shoulder is just hanging off your neck, hanging off your ears. Now straighten out those forearms and wrists, maybe several imaginary puppet strings to get this effect. Take your left hand and flip it upside down. Boom, imaginary violin. Uh, windscreen wiper those over to the right. And then back again. Uh, check in with your spine. Make sure the back of your neck is still nice and long. Imaginary string or water or beam of light or pulling upwards. And let's make this motion a little bit bigger. So we're windscreen wipering from side to side. And hopefully you can feel some moving parts somewhere in your shoulder or your wrist or maybe your elbow, who knows what. Somewhere that feels like it's getting a little bit of oil. Maybe somewhere that hasn't had any oil for a long time. A check in with your lower jaw. If your shoulders are hanging off your neck and hanging off your ears, then you might feel a little bit of movement in your lower jaw. Uh, jaw is really important for playing the fiddle. Let's take a moment to check in with that. So your lower jaw attaches to your skull right in behind your ears. If you take one finger in front and one finger behind your ears and give those a little soft massage, you can just about feel where that jaw starts. And take your fingers just in front of your earlobes there and see if you can find where your lower jaw and your upper jaw are connected together. There's like some webbing in there. Uh, we're just going to softly press on that point there with our fingertips and take one deep breath in. And out. Shift those fingertips down below your jaw. See if you can find somewhere nice and crunchy in there. When you've got a nice spot to press on, we're going to take one more deep breath there. Deepest breath you've taken all day. And out. And release those hands to your side. All right, one more time. Puppet string attached to the back of one of your hands. Lifting that hand up. And the other one. Don't let your shoulder try to help. If it does, just drop that hand. Have another go. Straighten them out. Nice straight line across the back of your hand and your forearms. Left hand flips upside down. Imaginary fiddle. And windscreen wipering. First, really small. And then getting a little bit bigger. I'm going to stop talking for a moment so I can let my tongue relax. Like my lower jaw is a basket and my tongue is just resting in that basket.
one more on each side, and then we're going to fetch our instruments. And take a nice comfy seat. So any comfy seat is fine so long as your spine is vertical and your thighs are horizontal. I'm sitting up on a cushion to make this work. We don't need any elbow room yet because we're only going to use the bow and the fiddle one by one to start off with. Resting our hands on our thighs and just checking in with each of the parts of that spine. Nice and long through the back of the neck. Look, I'm not going to lie here. I took a break there and I did some yoga with a real online yoga teacher for 20 minutes. So my spine is feeling way better. I recommend it. Her name's Adrienne. She's great. Check her out. So we're going to now take that left hand and flip it upside down. And if your spine is nice and relaxed in this vertical shape, then you might get a little bit of a rebound effect, like you might have seen me doing there. And switch. And once more on each side, switch. And switch. And let both the palms sit face up for a moment. Now we've got a lot of gravity pulling us down all the time, so we need to have an equal opposite force that pulls us up. Uh, I guess in the most mundane sense that equal opposite force is chemical energy from our muscles. But I've never found that to be a very useful visualization uh, when I'm playing fiddle tunes or violin tunes. Um, so that idea of light or water or string, whatever it is, let it be moving upwards, up your spine. Whatever you don't want, whatever you, don't want, you want to get rid of, throw out, it's good to throw it upwards. You know, if you push things down, it just turns into a stomach ache sooner or later. But you can get rid of things by sending them upwards. Throw them out the top of your head. Give it a go. Anyway, now we're ready to pick up our bow. My bow hold looks like this, but whatever yours looks like, let it be soft and curvy. We're going to take that whole bow and flip it upside down. And let there be some suspension in those fingers so that they shift and the weight changes as the bow flips upside down. Once more on each side. Now the next time your bow is upside down, rest your hand on the back of your rest the back of your hand on your knee. Try not to hit your dog in the head because she's not going to like that. Now we're going to take the other hand. Come in here and we're going to grab the bow by the frog and pick it up. And our bow hand here is going to hardly move. See, it was in such a natural shape to start off with, it doesn't really need to move. Let's put the bow back in there. And one more time we're going to take it out. So that hand is barely twitching as I put the bow in and out. Let the hand relax completely. Give it a little wiggle if you want to. This time we'll put it back in. Percy's looking at me warily. And this time we'll flip it back up the right way. Beautiful. Put that bow aside. Swap for your fiddle. So let the fiddle hand rest with the back of the hand on your knee, just like your bow hand was doing. And then bring that fiddle in and slot it into your hand. And just like with the bow, we want the hand to move as little as possible. So I need to softly curve those fingers around there. I'm going to put one finger on each string, but I'm making no attempt to put them where they actually belong. I've got first finger on G string, second on D, third on A, and fourth on E. But they're just sitting comfortably close together. They're not stretching out for their spots. Have a go at taking your hand away for a moment. Settle that fiddle in really comfortable on your shoulder. So it feels good with no hand. Fly that hand in underneath touch those fingers on the string one more time. They're not squeezing the string down, they're actually just touching the surface of the string. So we want to make that hand feel really soft and relaxed and comfortable. And then when you've got that, we're going to take the first finger, pick it up, and tap it half a dozen times softly on the string. Then the second finger. And the third finger. So we're not pressing the string down, we're just touching the surface of it. Then the fourth finger. Now we're going to try doing the same thing with the thumb. Most of us are gripping way too hard with our thumbs. With just a little bit of uh, weight here with your chin and your head, you shouldn't need much weight in your thumb. So if you can feel it changing a lot when you shift your thumb and start tapping it there, 
See if you can make this part here feel a little bit more comfortable. So the fiddle rests on your shoulder and your head rests on the fiddle. I've got a high set up here because I have quite a long neck. So I've got an extra bit here on my shoulder rest and I've got an extra high chin rest. So that's a little bit different from what most people have. Take your hand away one more time. See if you can make that feel comfortable. Fly it back in. There's all kinds of patterns we can do with this finger tapping over here. We can alternate fingers, we can swap them around in different, in different orders. Uh, we can also aim to make one finger land exactly as the next one is lifting off. Uh, what if we do thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger? That's one of the patterns you can try. And you can just make up more and more difficult ones of these if you're enjoying the process. Right, and finally we're going to use the bow and the fiddle together. Combining our two hands now. Find that nice comfy spot on your shoulder for your fiddle, somewhere where it feels like it could just about hold up by itself. And you can leave your hand on the fiddle shoulder here, we're not going to use fingers the first time. Whatever your bow hold looks like, let it have some suspension in there, some softness. Stick it to the G, feel that soft squishiness. And then let your bow arm release down to the floor. And let it play all four strings as it does. And if the tip of your bow brushes right on the floor at the end, that's great. We want to release anything that's gripping in this bow arm. Once more, stick it to the G, feel that squish. And let it swing out. So now we're going to add just enough control to turn the fall into an orbit. Like yoga breathing, you could exhale as you draw the bow across the strings. Imagine how the moon is falling around the earth and the earth is falling around the sun and the sun's falling around the galaxy. This open chord is a bit weird, so if you like, we can add a G chord here. That's first finger on A and then second finger, G natural on the E string. So that's a little bit more satisfying to listen to. One more thing to add, uh, resist temptation to slow down as you come in to land. It only makes it harder. Just come in at a nice constant speed, land strong, and then stick it right there so that it doesn't bounce. Alright, let's reverse this. We're now going to start at the tip and we're going to start on the E string here. So mine is playing a G here. It's fine to do on open strings if you want to leave the left hand out of the picture. So now we're sticking the bow on at the tip. And we're making that orbit go right round our head. Here, controlling the bow to land is a little trickier. So there, slowing down can be useful. Check in with that left thumb if you're using your fingers there. Make sure it's not over squeezing. Now let's try joining these two things up. We're going to start from the down bow. Gold standard is to make four equal notes going up and then four equal notes going back, going back down again. I'm going to have fun doing this again when they let us out of this lockdown here and see if it sounds any better. Let's try a perfect cadence to finish. So it's going to have a G chord, then a C chord that just shifts both of those fingers uh, along one string. That's our C chord, then a D chord, first finger on G, second finger is playing an F sharp on the E string, so those two are both parallel. And then back to G chord. So let's do two rolls of each of them. Ready, G chord, starting on G string. Toru, fa. Alright. Now, it doesn't count as yoga if we don't close the practice. So lay that fiddle down for a moment. Take your hands to your heart. And bow your head, feel that nice stretch down the back of your neck. We're going to take one big inhale all together. Thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with me. That was lovely.
And as we exhale, we say Namaste. See you soon.